Uh, then we go down even more concrete. I'm going to ask Antti Huntus from the Arts Promotion Center to join me now. And let me see if I can successfully share my screen and especially this. Antti, will you say something so I will know if I can both see you and be yes. present? Yes. So can you hear me? And I see, see you comfortably. Wheel? I see you and I see the wheel. Does it look good on your end as well? Yes, it looks fine for me and hopefully for the others too. Beautiful. Okay, now it's time to tell you more about the wheel chart. And I'm really happy to have Antti here uh, with me promoting this because I think he was originally the father of this wheel chart because in another project he had done something similar and we've known each other for many years and both we've been cooperating the Finnish Heritage Agency and the Arts Promotion Center and I think this is the best thing that has come out of our good cooperation so far. But Antti was thinking if I tell here in the beginning a bit more about how we went on about doing this, I just have a couple of slides and then we go into the actual demonstration yeah. but maybe you want to present yourself first yeah shortly my name is Antti Huntus and like like it was said I come from Arts Promotion Center Finland and I really uh, I'm jealous to Lena's title because Lena is a, a senior advisor and I work as a special advisor and uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure what is very special about it but yeah I'm also a member of this um, uh, Finnish uh, advisory board of ICH. Most of my work has to do with the uh, professional arts, but when it comes to these uh, questions of ICH and Finnish uh, Arts Promotion Center, then I'm the official uh, representing that. But shortly that was part. And I'm not father of the wheel chart in, in, in general, because the wheel chart, they were used also in the, in the already in the Second World War, so this is a very old tradition, but in these days when you have so many digital apps, I think this was re really refreshing for us to find a, a kind of a tool that you can touch with your hands and, and it is made mm -hmm. of carton and, and somehow it, it reminds me at least about the old, old world. Yes, and I think Antti, we were both struggling with the fact that sustainable development is important for us, it's important personally, but also in our own work that we do. And then I think we were both struggling a bit like what else is sustainable development and flashy lines in our strategies and what could we do in concrete. And we thought that if we get people together, we get them discussing what sustainability is and discussing in quite a concrete way that what can I do, what can my organization do, we could actually do something good in the world. And therefore we came out with the idea of this wheel chart of sustainable development. Uh, we will, I think you, most of you have it printed already, you have the copy with you, or then you have at least had a look at it in English or even in one of your own languages. So. At the moment, we are, is it 14 languages now? You can see them on the screen. And my special thanks goes to all of my dear colleagues all over the world who have been helping out with the translation. So thank you, all of you, many of you present also today. And the latest additions come from Czech Republic and then Iran. So just today was finalized the wheel chart in Persian language. So we are very grateful for, for all your help. Uh, and now my slides are not changing, which is a slight problem, but I will try to do something about it. And in meanwhile, I can tell that uh, when, when developing this tool, the first thing uh, or, or principle was for us that we don't give guidelines or we don't give instruction. Instead, we give good questions because that is how people get involved with these, with these processes. And, and question is a, a good thing to uh, attach the new thing to your old memories and old, old knowledge. So that's why this was one of the basic ideas of this tool to give good questions to people. 
Yes, and here on the screen, hopefully you can see the, the members and names of the team members who were behind the wheel chart and also our good partners and funders in this project. I guess it's only just a bit slow in changing, I hope. But now I'm not getting anywhere on them. Okay, then perhaps we are going to move forward or? Yes, I'm gonna stop sharing and I will have a look what else. Okay, now I got out of there, so. Yes, okay. All over the world is my next slide. I just want to tell you that our website has been visited from over 100 countries in the past years. So the wheel chart was uh, given to around 150 people from 12 different countries in our seminar one year ago, Living Heritage in the Nordic Countries here in Finland. It was given to representatives of more than 120 countries and dozens of NGOs at UNESCO's 15th COM in Colombia. It's been shared out to the leaders of European museums at NEMO's annual conference Estonia. Also a wheelchair, children's own wheelchair has been made. You can see an inspirational video on our website. And we, all, we have also been funding one project where a version of the wheelchair for schools to discuss sustainable development is being developed this year. In Australia, there has been developed a thing called Cultural Compass, and also ANSI has been leading now a project in Finland where we are working on something similar, but with all of the SDGs. But now we're going to go into, let me see if I can just very quickly show you the picture that takes us to where I want to take you when we go into discussing how to actually use it, because Dear colleagues, I am going to take you now to a forest. Uh, Antti is gonna, we're gonna be using the wheelchair now. Antti is going to ask me questions and I am going to reply. Yeah, and this demonstration is what we are uh, hoping that you will do after us. So now pay attention because uh, these instructions that comes with our, with our talk are really vital to you also in the next phase. So basically, one of you is going to be the one who asks questions, and the other one here, uh, Lena, is going to be the one who is now analyzing the activity she has chosen. But to do it simple, we follow the rules that are printed here on the compass. So, Lena, uh, can you choose now? I think you have already done that, but can you choose a living heritage phenomenon or activity that interests you? Well, because it is autumn now, and one of my favorite things in the autumn is to pick mushrooms. I was thinking of taking you into the Finnish forest and to talk about picking mushrooms. Okay. Then I'm going to ask you one, one question that is not here in this compass, but what interests me now that what kind of a role are you going to take as a, as a mushroom picker? Are you representing yourself? Are you a practitioner or are you perhaps a member of a community of mushroom pickers or uh, are you representing perhaps an entrepreneur or company that uh, sells mushrooms? What is your role? Yes, I mean, naturally, I am a practitioner myself, but I thought in today's session I could play a little a role play and I could have the hat of a local mushroom NGO because we have such things in Finland. There's a national NGO for mushroom pickers, and uh, but there are also several regional and local associations. And I think for today's audience, Antti, it would be quite useful to see how this can be used in an organizational context. Okay, so yeah, accepted. That's my role today. Accepted. Now, Lena, if you look at the compass and the outer sleeve of the compass, you will find their titles or directions uh, that are based on these four pillars of sustainability. 
Now take a close look and, and what uh, topic now interests you the most? Where would you like to go? There are things that concern society, things that concern economy, uh, things that concern environment and culture. But the topics, mm -hmm. now what would you like to choose? Uh, I would like to discuss about accessibility, Antti. Okay. Now I will turn also accessibility here in my compass. And, and there I find three questions. And now first one goes to Lena. Is this activity open and available to all? Well, that's maybe the most beautiful thing about mushroom picking here in Finland. I mean, it's, it's a big country. We are not that many, five million. But um, maybe you know that mushroom picking is a very, um, it's a big hobby in Finland. It's actually more than 40% uh, of Finnish people go to the forest and pick mushrooms every year. And we have uh, forests all around and we have this thing called everyman's right. So basically anyone living or even tourists in Finland, they can go anywhere in the forest, no matter who owns it, as long as it's not on anyone's yard, but they can go there and pick it. And so basically, it really is open and available to all. Maybe if you live in a bigger city, you need to take the bus and drive somewhere, but that's also possible. I mean, I live 10 minutes from the capital, uh, Helsinki, but you can take a bus for 30 minutes and then you're already in a in the middle of nowhere or at least in a place where you have mushrooms mm. so yes oh okay then I'm, I'm going to add my own question that if if, if people or, or one has uh, difficulties with moving movability are there any possible for a person for example in a wheelchair to pick mushrooms or be in part does your uh, community arrange uh, field trips or help people with with uh, moving disabilities well yes i mean basically in principle it is possible when you look at the routes where people can go in national parks for example here close by there are such routes where you can go on a wheelchair for example no not on a wheelchair but on a wheelchair so you can go there and if you have a mushroom close by you could go so basically it is possible but of course it you are right it poses difficulties you need to be able to go to the forest okay now, the next question goes, uh, how does this picking mushrooms uh, build a sense of community or how they promote participation? Well, usually it is, I mean, such a hobby that I would say that most of the people do it as a family or I learned it from my parents. We used to do it when we were, when I was a child. But it's also done quite much alone. So especially the older people they go on their own or then with, with, their, um, with their spouse or something into a forest. But if I think of my NGO, I think we, for us, it's important to get together. We meet um, regularly once in every two months, but then especially in the autumn time, also in the springtime when there is the Korvasieni season, we meet, but we especially meet in the autumn time when the, when the, mushrooms come up from the ground and for us it is really important to get together and uh, organize these different kind of events and also teach other people to 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 learn to do it well basically you, you already answered a little bit to this next question that what is the role of different genders in the activity do you want to sharpen it a little bit or or comment it well, this is definitely such living heritage that is open for, for, bo bo for all genders. So it, it is really popular both with men and women here in Finland. So I think that's also special about this, this tradition. Okay. It's even called actually, is it in, in Russian language, it's called silent hunting, mushroom picking. So it is really for the hunter gatherers. From, from all genders. Yeah. Okay, now we have uh, explored through one topic. And now, Lena, you got the idea of what, what the one topic contains. What topic would you like to choose next? I would like to talk a bit about money, Antti. Oh, that's a, it's a hard one. 
Well, it is a bit hard, but I think it's also related to our work. And though, although I am volunteer in my work in the NGO, it's, I think it's an interesting topic. Okay, uh, then I suggest that we go to the economic equity area. You can also, you can choose, but this is my strong suggestion. Okay, we can do that. <laughs> because the first question here is, what is the role of money for the activity? Uh, as such, I mean, when you think about it, one can go to the forest and pick up mushrooms. Of, of course, it's free food. It's free protein growing happily in the forest. And it's only like 10% of the whole lot of mushrooms that is being harvested every year. So most of it stays in the ground. But it is also possible to, to make money with it. And uh, every autumn there are such people who go and pick them. And uh, it's not really here in the capital region, but in more remote areas, there are such places where you can, if you really love the silent hunting, you can go out and pick a lot of mushrooms and you can take them to this place and even sell them. So to earn some more living for yourself. But uh, if you would like to collect it to sort of, it's also possible to sell to restaurants directly. But for that, you need to have a certain license so that the restaurants know you're selling the right stuff and not the wrong stuff and getting in trouble with selling poisonous mushrooms. But, but it is there and basically it is for everyone. Uh, but I mean, here I'm coming back to actually the uh, question you asked before, is it for everyone? But does how can one get a license if I am uh, someone coming from from abroad, I'm a new Finn and I'm, for example, unemployed, but I love the nature and I used to pick my mushrooms in, in my former countries. How could I do it? So I'm a bit wondering that could we bring somehow together the accessibility and economy here? We do, I mean, we do organize these courses for knowing mushrooms, but I also it's, know that it's possible to, to, how to get the license to this. So I don't know, maybe we could be of assistance here to make it more available for, for everyone. Okay. Uh, one more question that comes now out of the compass, not, not from this economic uh, topic, but do you see any dangers if, if it booms up or comes, a, comes a, as a big trend to pick up mushrooms? That what is the ecological impact of people now going hundreds and thousands of Finnish going to pick up mushrooms from the forest and maybe leaving trashes behind or can you see any danger in, in this uh, activity to, to get bigger? Mm. Well, I think you already brought up some valuable points, but maybe I can share one that is that could be a problem. I mean, uh, something a living heritage phenomenon compared to picking mushrooms is picking berries. And actually now for quite many years, all the berries that are picked or most of the berries that are picked for for the use of 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 what's it called for factories making jam and selling it in big quantities it is not finnish people but it is people from asia so hundreds of people are flu, flu, flown come here with an airplane from asia to pick the berries from finland because it is finnish companies hiring them but the Finnish people don't necessarily want to do it because the wage is not that good. So I think there is maybe one thing in relation to sustainable development that is it sustainable to fly people from there. But then again, for them, it's a possible possibility to make a living here in Finland and then return back to their families. But these are maybe some points. But I see, Antti, the clock is running. So yeah. lastly, you could ask me the last question. Yeah, actually... Uh... I'm also going to now point out that if you come up with new questions like we did here with Lena, then you are free to ask them because there's no limitation of, of the questions, only the time is the limit. But now, Lena, when you have explored these new, many topics, or at least the, these two, uh, are there any new thoughts that have come up uh, that you could put into practice, perhaps in your community, this NGO, what are the new discoveries after these questions that you mm. have come up with? 
And not only discussion, because we already had a bit of a discussion about mushroom picking yesterday that a made bit, me yes. think things that I did not think about my heritage before. And one of them is this, that I think it's really great that it's transmitted to children here through families, but not in every family. So how to reach out to those families that who, who don't get this this transmission in their own family. I know that schools and even even like kindergartens, they make trips. I mean, my forest is like 20 meters from here and every school kids get to go there. But how could we open up the work of my NGO also more for those families? How could we reach out to new groups? For example, in my hometown, there are tens of thousands of immigrants and uh, could we cooperate with them more? I think we definitely could. And uh, what else? Maybe these were some of the thoughts that came into my mind. And as the board member of my little local mushroom association, I think I'm going to take this to the new, to the next board meeting that we're going to have online next week and discuss, or at least I think we could all maybe use the wheel chart and think that how could we do in do better in terms of sustainability because it is important for us i think thank you yes that was the end of our demonstration thanks a lot Antti. and now it's going to be time for you to start working so i have really loved the sessions that i've been participating myself uh, or then organizing i think it's interesting to listen to people and experts and to hear what they have to say. But I think it's really nice to get to know more people and to get to discuss yourself. It's a bit scary, I know, when it's many people. So that's why we decided to put you into small rooms. And in a minute, we are going to put you into rooms of three people. So it's going to be Zoom doing it. So we cannot choose it so you can be happily surprised by the speed dating we're going to do in a minute but i hope all of you have a wheel chart with you or some kind of a printed version if not i am still going to uh, put on the chat a link to the pdf it's an easy read version so basically the we the things you saw a minute ago in my PowerPoint presentation. So you can open it up in your iPad, in your computer or something, so you can have an easier look. And we ask you when you go to the room, if you need to get a cup of coffee or run to the restroom, do it in two, three minutes and then be quickly in your room so, so people see that you're coming. Uh, we need one person, have a quick exchange of what kind of a intangible cultural heritage form you would you like to discuss and it is about your expertise what is your work or is it related to your work is it your hobby is it some case you're working on in your but choose something be it craft singing nature whatever you know this field already so have a quick discussion what's it gonna be and who is maybe you can say like one or two things that you know well that you're an expert in and you would like to discuss about, then choose one element. It's possible if you are quick, you can maybe have two elements discussed, but I think a half an hour that we're going to do, or is it 25 minutes, Antti? Uh, so you'll see how you do it. But one is the one who is answering the question, then pick who will be asking the questions. So you can use the questions from here and make up your own questions. And then the third person is going to be an observer. We were thinking of doing this in pairs, but in case someone is lost, doesn't get a camera working or the sound working or doesn't have a compass, we thought it could be technically safer that you are three. So the third person could be an observer. So you can see what is happening, you can make notes, you can also ask questions or if you know the thing, if you have sort of a, like some kind of a crafts form, you can also contribute. But, but someone asking, someone answering, someone observing or filling in. And we hope that the observers would also make some notes because we're going to uh, 
uh, send in the feedback form quite soon after this event. So we would like to hear your observation. What's happening? What are the questions? What is working? What is not? What is difficult or something? So are you clear with the task? Thumbs up. Okay, people are slowly coming back. Uh, put your thumbs up if you got into a room and you managed to have some kind of a conversation with someone about intangible cultural heritage. I see some thumbs up. I, th I think I see almost every thumb up. Could I ask you to, to share something in the chat to mention a bit about the element, what you were, it, it would be nice to see a bit just very quickly, like what, what was the element you were discussing about. And when some of you are discussing that, I would very much like to hear about your discussion. Some points that you could break, bring up and preferably something about the tool. I bet there would be myriads of interesting information we could share on the actual content of tangible cultural heritage. Paula, we do you do a bit of muting there. So, but uh, maybe focusing on the tool. So in the chat, share the living heritage elements you discussed, and then it would be very nice to hear something. Is it Dita saying that I want to share my experience? <laughs> Put your microphone on Dita. And so you're welcome to maybe raise the Hi. Hi, Lena. Hi. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. It's really nice to see you. I'm so happy to see you all. It's incredible. <laughs> well, thank you very much for this uh, opportunity. It's really a fantastic experience. Thank you for the, the, the wheel. Uh, we just did it in Czech Republic uh, yesterday. My colleague Jan uh, just showed it probably the first one. So we are glad to use it um, uh, in the near future. And uh, for the workshop, I was with Julian uh, from uh, Switzerland, and we were discussing actually two elements, um, the uh, risk of avalanches and um, the Christmas uh, decorations. Um, and uh, uh, well, they were obvious um, questions uh, about uh, impact uh, on nature or impact of nature on the element uh, or on economy. Um, and um, one maybe thought that didn't cross my mind before speaking with him uh, was the role of um, uh, priests and um, beliefs and, um, and some re religious or um, yeah, uh, other uh, dimensions uh, of this element. Uh, Dita, now I lost your voice for some reason. I don't know, maybe it's something with the connection, but in the end, you mentioned something about the role of the priests. Yes, yes, I said that it was the, the new information for me. I was glad to uh, discuss it with uh, Julian because it didn't cross my mind uh, that uh, uh, the element can have uh, as well some uh, um, religious or um, um, some dimensions of beliefs uh, of traditional yeah, uh, beliefs. <laughs> okay, thank you, Dita. Nice to hear and thank you once more for the translation. And I hear you're also printing it in Czechia. You yes. made, made a copy, so I really look forward to hear when you will be using it and how does that work. Some other It'll keep you in. Yes, some other comments. Jet is saying I was pleasantly surprised how much there was to discuss following one question. Jet, do you want to comment on that and at the same time share your experience in the Netherlands? Put your microphone on, Jet. Nope. 
can Paula yeah, can we yeah you can <laughs> yeah, well we discussed a, a tradition that I had never heard of and I can I can still not pronounce exactly what it was if it was but it was an Austria offer after farming the wine which brought together drinking the first wine but also slaughtering pigs and it was very interesting to hear all the different elements that came together which were good and bad and social cohesion uh, coming back from from different parts of the country to this festivity, but also the question, well, how much are we still connected with nature? It used to be, of course, the, the very seasonal, seasonally bound. And the comment was that perhaps we were indulging a bit more in three course dinners and we should go back to really enjoying that moment that the wine is being made and, and the season is closed. and. and have a bit more an eye for the sus sustainability in the ecological sense of the word. It was very interesting and there was so much to say and to develop on. Hmm. Jet, will you at the same time now tell a bit about what you're planning to do and what you'll be publishing tomorrow? Oh, we are. Uh, I was very much inspired by this view of uh, sustainability, but we adapted it. Uh, I adapted it to um, the, 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 the work I'm doing now in Holland, which is not so much yet on ecology, but more on uh, uh, intangible heritage that is under discussion, under debate. So we have a, a lot of traditions in Holland, perhaps you have that too, like fireworks, but also the position of Black Pete in St. Nicholas festivities, and also traditions with animals, which are figuring in the public debate. So I developed a, a, a wheel chart that has more questions on these sort of reflections. Can you involve other people in your, in your tradition? Are people locked out? Is there criticism? How do you deal with that criticism? So it's a bit... It has different accent, accents, but it was very, it's very comparable in a way. Mm, but contra controversial heritage, can one yes. say? So, hmm, when it's difficult. Yes, yes. I, we, we don't like, I don't like to use that term because the, yeah. the communities don't like it. But mm. that is, in a way, of course, what it is. It's, it's controversial in a way that there are people in societies and tendencies that are really contesting mm. that, that heritage, yes. I'm so glad to hear that our work has inspired you and I really look forward to see the version even if it is in Dutch so I will definitely use Google Translate and with my little skills of, of German I will probably get out of it so. Good, we'll surely just have time to discuss it, thank you. Yes, some other comments. what kind of discussions did you have and did you get some new kind of ideas maybe i'll point out to gabriel dechman my colleague from from austria i mean you've done such good work in translating the wheel chart into german with the cooperation of four countries was it also looking to patrick and and others here so and also people from the swiss office gabriel how was your session with the wheel chart Um, I was in the same one as uh, Jet, yet, I don't know how you put it. <laughs> yes, so it was very interesting. I was the observer um, and I think it, it works very well to intend a new question. So it was quite natural that they started with the questions and then they continued with their own uh, and then they came back to the wheel. And um, yeah, there was a lot of reflection going on on I think both um, sides and also the, the the takeaways so it was very it, it was really uh, it reminded me of a coaching session in a way where the the practitioners were the clients and they reflected about their own practice so mm -hmm. but yeah. I have also sort of realized that if you have a role or you have the hat when we were t we were testing this in Hannah Holman one year ago we had a session uh, where half an hour and then another half an hour and sometimes people were practitioners and then they were museum directors and so that you see that when you change that role that who you are it looks totally different and I remember talking with Jet in February about this that one could actually have a session just with this and with one element but so that one could be the practitioner one could be researcher one could be entrepreneur so that would also be one way to look at one particular element. I see the hand from Esbjörn up, so maybe I'll give you, give you the floor from Sweden. Esbjörn, did you have your hand up? Yeah. 
maybe not. Okay, some other comments still coming up from the uh, from you guys or something that we should auntie or others to br br bring up from from the chat box. Auntie, do you hear me? Yes, I would like to say that uh, we were talking with uh, Einar and Berte about a certain fishing tradition phenomenon from Mali. And, and it was really fascinating to hear about it. And I, I just, because I, my role was, was to be the observer, I was figuring out that, okay, we have made a tool that is, uh, the inst instructions here are for the solo use of the wheel chart. So if we want to make it the dialogue tool, of course, we need a little bit more instructions like, first, you have to describe the activity to the other one, which, which were to dig naturally. And this is something very good that we, we trust in people to be creative and, and not to follow the rules as they are printed, but create their own, own rules and make, them, make their own questions. And this is very important. I think that you have to follow the story and what the other one is uh, sharing with you. And then again, maybe these kind of a questions that stimulate the action that what is, what is there to be done or what are the new ideas that I come, come up with this, this dialogue that I'm having. Uh, we were talking about this fishing tradition and its relation to the uh, conflict uh, solutions or, or as using fishing tradition as an instrument of peace. And this was a really interesting conversation that we, I think we could have uh, go on with a few hours. It was so uh, interesting to, I think 20 minutes is, it's not a time enough for, for having that kind of a deep analyzing uh, sessions. Mm. Yes, Patrick, I see your hand up. Yep, uh, so we were three of us presenting uh, each uh, his item, his tradition. What, what was, was very interesting that uh, we naturally slipped. We started, for instance, we talked about nature and then we ended up in ecology. So uh, it's very uh, interesting to see that uh, in a way, uh, the, the, these compartments are rather didactical and in uh, practically, you just uh, in a creative way comes from one point to the other. So everything is interlinked and interwoven and that's mm -hmm. also uh, with the different traditions. I mean, uh, it's, we, we, in a way uh, it's a whole and here it's just like a wheel uh, for didactic purposes. And we found it very challenging and creative uh, uh, what uh, this tool is all about. Mm, nice to hear, Patrick, and we look forward. Thank you also for you in assisting the, the translation to German, but also you made your own Luxembourgish version, and I hear you will be printing it out also there. But I totally agree. I think it's a nice tool for discussing and having people sort of brainstorm around sustainability, but yet in quite a concrete manner. That right away when I entered the discussion about mushroom picking, especially in my own language, in, in, in the privacy with me and auntie sort of that you see that, oh, I haven't, I've done this for all of my life, but I never realized this, that, oh, actually there is something we could do better. So that is what we like about that. And we don't think that we made the absolutely perfect questions, but we made some good questions and it's up to the people who use it to, to invent more questions. Uh, we see some comments there in the chat box and, and now it's a bit difficult to go all, of, all uh, through them, but we'll have a careful look and I thank you all. At this point, is there someone still who wants to comment on something before closing the session? But I think what, what we want to do here from our end, from Finland on behalf of the whole team who have been and making the compass and I also think on behalf of all my colleagues who have invested time uh, for the translations and also money even for printing it and you will be using it. I encourage you to use it. So uh, what you can do, I still had something to share from here. Let's see if this works out uh, quickly. So we hope that you would use it in your own work. 
organize a workshop online is probably the right thing to do at the moment. And uh, we have now today offered you one way to do it online and and we'll see what your feedback is then later but what i hear from you and what i see from your smiling faces is that this was a good idea and it worked out well and i would say that especially with the zoom where you can put people into smaller groups you can have them talking so if sustainable development is in the agenda of your organization i know many of you work for ministries for the government for NGOs, for museums, for different kind of institutions. Take it and use it. And it is really there if you once more, Paula, kindly link to the chat, the website where all the 14 languages version can now be found. Use it for your own purposes. Or then when the world opens up, print your own versions and share it out and have people using it. I think it's, for example, with the museum field, we've been sharing it out and we think it's a really nice tool also for museums to see how they can do better in terms of sustainability, but also in terms of intangible cultural heritage. So if you still, if your language was not included and you want to translate it, send me an email, you, you, you know how, how you can contact me. I'm happy to send you the English version send me back the version in your own language and we will be happy to help you with the graphic design. So we have made most of those here in, or actually all that you can find in our website, we have made them here. So we are ready to offer you for free the graphic design because we want the tool to be spread all, all over the world. And uh, you can make your own wheel chart. I mean, I think Jet made a nice, told a nice comment about how they have made their own version so if you think this is interesting but now i don't know about the questions and we would actually need to know more about this or that thing so you are very welcome to make your own wheel charts so for example in australia uh, we've received a thing called cultural compass where this kind of a tool is used for um how do you say, decision makers in uh, municipalities who are working for the, for the municipality council. So whenever they make decisions, the compass, the wheelchair is there to help them to know how, how they can do such decisions that are good for cultural life. So you are free to make your own version. So therefore there is the, the Creative Commons CC uh, CC by 4.0 that you can make it just say that original version was this and that and maybe to have a link there but you are very free to exploit the thing that we have but I guess this was all from from my side I wonder if the colleagues have something to say well lastly amaze us with your expertise on other things. I want to get invitation from other countries and see you lovely people in other meetings, so. Yeah, from my behalf, thank you a, a lot of this day and, and please be, be in touch with Lena and I think we are going to uh, head up a webinar in the end of this month concerning the SDG 17, all the goals in a different kind of a digital uh, platform. And it would be, a, I think, a nice experience for all of you. Please contact Lena and Lena will send you an information about that workshop too. But by, from my behalf, thank you a lot. Thank you to all the speakers, Katrina, Matti and Aura as well. And lovely afternoon. <laughs>